What's going on YouTube? GSNow right here. So in today's video we're going to discuss about the current status of both the iOS 10.3.x jailbreaks and the iOS 11 jailbreaks. And I'm going to start with the fact that uh, there is quite a lot to talk about since a lot of things have been going on in the jailbreak community and as I said there is a lot to talk about. So please pay attention and uh, if you're running a specific version tell me in the comment section down below so that I can give you a recommendation on what to do or whether to update or not. If you are uncertain. So um, I'm going to start with the Goblin jailbreak for the iOS 10.3 to 10.3.3 on 64-bit. Now a lot of you are running iOS 10.3 to 10.3.3 and that's very understandable and there's also the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus kind of devices in there that are still running 10.3.3 but are not compatible with Goblin. For that to have Meridian for the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus and all the rest. But anyways, yes, the uh, Goblin Jailbreak has received the RC2 a couple days ago, but I decided to um, pretty much include it in a cumulative update video. So what it changes? Well, it adds more devices as supported, it fixes the Cydia icon sometimes not being shown on the device, uninstalls drop beer and you can install OpenSSH instead if you're you know, more familiar with OpenSSH for the uh, SSH connection, and it fixes the Respring Panic. That's pretty much the changelog for the release candidate too, and uh, it works pretty stable, I mean it's pretty okay for the moment. From uh, what I tested and from what I got from people, it works definitely fine. Uh, it still needs some polishing here and there, but I'm pretty sure that the uh, developer behind Goblin is constantly working on finding better ways to do stuff, so it's a good idea to install the RC2 if you're running the RC1. And uh, if you're downloading it, would be a good idea to check the download with the uh, SHA1. Going back to the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, this is for Meridian. Now, Meridian itself is still a jailbreak for the iOS 10.x. This one is not limited to the iOS 10.3 up to 10.3.3. You can jailbreak iOS 10.2.1 with it and probably even lower, like 10.2. And this one also supports the other devices like the iPhone SE, the iPhone 5S, the iPad and whatever, the iPod Touch 6th generation. But this one also supports the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. It has a different approach in the jailbreaking mechanism. It is currently on the beta 6, so if you're running the Meridian jailbreak on the iOS 10.3.x, please go ahead and um, update to the beta 6. Now, these jailbreaks are still in the works, and expect them to still be very buggy and still need a lot of work, but they are working on it, the developers of these jailbreaks are working on it, so um, it's a good idea to always use the latest beta and monitor this website, this one for Meridian and this one for Goblin, both of them in the description down below, in order to stay updated. Now. Um, we're going to go here to the Electra. For those of you who are running iOS 11.0 up to 11.1.2, do not worry if you're running iOS 11.2 up to 11.2.2, I am also going to cover that situation right away. So for those of you running the iOS 11.0 up to iOS 11.1.2, on 64-bit of course, um, then you have the Electra, which is currently on the Beta 10 that I presented last uh, night. So it pretty much contains quite a lot of fixes, but it also creates the ground for the Cydia to come. And as I said in my previous video, Electra is going to receive an update that will include a modified version of Cydia according to Coolstar, the developer of it. And he says in here, quote, expect a modified version of Cydia to come to Electra very soon. Beta 10's new command line tools include all but three of Cydia dependencies. And um, he later followed it up a couple hours ago with this got dpkg compiled for ios arm 64 thanks to nitro and jay walker just have gpg and apt left to go so from three leftovers we have only two and i assume he's going to start working on this pretty soon so yeah it's a good idea to update to the latest version to the beta 10 in here if you're running an older version and again something related to the uh, electra thing please do not install it from third party sources since jailbreak applications should be installed only from the official website yes it might be safe in many cases to install it from 
other third parties that are signing it for one year. They might not be doing shenanigans to the uh, product itself, but it's still better to install it from the official website since you can get the latest updates from here and see the change log and so on with the recommendations and important notes, something that you might not be able to see on third party sources. Yeah, now I said I'm going to talk about the iOS 11.2 and 11.2.2 status and also about the um, 11.2.5. So there is this exploit in here that will be released by Zimperium. Now, this might not be enough, 100% enough for a jailbreak to come on top of it, but it might open a little bit of a gate for those of you who are waiting for a jailbreak and for developers who want to build a jailbreak for the iOS 11.2 up to iOS 11.2.2. Now, uh, they have announced a couple days ago that, quote, a new crucial vulnerability in Apple's Bluetooth daemon is available, and um, they say in here has been published by Randy Iden that you can follow on Twitter if you want, and they are uh, pretty much defining it as two different vulnerabilities, CVE 2018-4087 and CVE 2018-4095. And yes, these two vulnerabilities have been patched by Apple in iOS 11.2.5, and that is the reason you should not update if you're running iOS 11.2, 11.2.1 or 11.2.2 to the iOS 11.2. 2.5. They also say in here, quote, more details regarding the research process and the results will be published in the near future in a more detailed and technical write-up along with the full exploit source code. So yeah, it's a good idea to, to wait on the iOS 11.2.2 uh, since iOS 11.2.5 fixes all these vulnerabilities being completely invulnerable for the moment. So, taking a look in here on the uh, currently signed IPSWs, you can see that Apple has stopped signing the iOS 11.2.2, 11.2.1, and 11.2. These were, um, were signed just a few hours ago, but now they're completely unsigned, so you can no longer downgrade to them. This is the reason I'm saying if you're running iOS 11.2 or iOS 11.2.1, iOS 11.2.2, do not update to iOS 11.2.5 because uh, if a jailbreak is released on top of any of these exploits that have been released or that will be released, uh, you will not be able to downgrade back from iOS 11.2.5 to iOS 11.2.2, which is quite bad. For the iOS 11.2.5, there are currently no vulnerabilities known, which is quite bad, but yeah, the iOS 11.2.2 has two vulnerabilities that we can use. Maybe not enough for a jailbreak to come on top of them, but enough for a jailbreaker to start digging in and to start digging more into the process of jailbreaking, which is still better than having no vulnerabilities. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to stay updated. I'm Geosnow. Until the next time, Peace out.